So to consider amplitude modulation more, let's talk about this general wave, S of t. And in the previous section of videos, um, chapter 4.1, we discussed that this general wave could be modulated in a number of ways. We saw that each one of these colors is something that could be modulated. So you can have uh, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. The amplitude modulation, which is the coefficient of this sine function, this has a linear effect on the signal. However, the frequency and phase modulation will have some nonlinear effects. Therefore, we will be considering amplitude modulation first. Now, when we consider this amplitude modulation, we will say that the phase will be some type of constant. And additionally, the cosine wave, which we will use to modulate, so this purple and red part, we will also say that they are constants. So when we deal with this, we'll say that this part is a constant and that this part is a constant. Additionally, it's generally OK to assume that this is constant at 0 degrees. And this isn't really going to change any of our final results. So if you need to, we can just kind of assume that this is 0 and take away this part so that we don't have to think so hard about it. Now, when we apply amplitude modulation, this means that the amplitude here of this cosine wave is going to be directly proportional to some message m of t. So this is our baseband message that we want to send, and we're going to make the coefficient a, the amplitude of this cosine wave, directly proportional to our message. So in the time domain, we'll have some message m of t. And in the frequency domain, we'll consider that if we took the transform, that would be some capital MF. Now we know that it, our message in the time domain, if we convert it to the frequency domain, we'll be able to see that it has some bandwidth. And we'll say that that bandwidth is bandwidth B. Now, if we were to modulate this message, so if we were to take our message and directly apply it to the coefficient, as the coefficient of this cosine wave, where we have a constant frequency and no phase, no extra phase, we're just assuming it's zero. What that does is that moves the message to two places. It moves it to plus fc and minus fc, and it changes this leading coefficient by one half. So the message, this first part of the message in red is shifted to plus fc, and the second part of the message in green is shifted to minus fc. This is the effect of modulating the message, and you can see this by applying the Fourier transform tables or the Fourier transform properties. If we were to visualize this, what this means is that our original message, which had a bandwidth B, is now transported to minus FC and plus FC. And each one of these is also going to have a bandwidth of 2B. And also, we've gone from a height of A to now being 1 half of whatever the amplitude of the message was. This also means that you could write this, these two frequencies as minus fc plus b, minus fc minus b, and so on. And so this is a visualization of what happens when you modulate the message, comparing it in the original message in the frequency domain to the modulated message in the frequency domain. Now we can see that separating our message, if we consider plus and minus fc, we can see that that would be separated into parts that are above and below that upper fc and the lower fc. So we'll consider these parts, which are kind of on the outside. We'll call them the upper sideband. So the parts that are outside plus or minus fc are the upper sideband. Then we'll say the part that's on the inside is the lower sideband. So now, hopefully, you're starting to see, right, this is where this idea of the double sideband comes from, is we can consider to have the upper sideband and the lower sideband. Now, some things to note. Our original message, right, this is our original message, and it does not contain this frequency, fc. Our entire original message is below fc. Therefore, when we make a message 
m of f in the frequency domain or modulate that cosine wave, we are not introducing any wave components at fc. So because of that, we'll say that this is double sideband, meaning we have the upper sideband and the lower sideband. And also, we aren't introducing this f of c, so the carrier is suppressed. Now, this is a bit of a mouthful, but we'll call this double sideband suppressed carrier modulation. And you'll see it abbreviated as DSB SC.